only in understanding how it happened and not repeating it, but it don't affect us today. There's nothing stopping me from being on a university full of white people. What, 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 how, how am I any different than a white person? Let me, let me tell you this, I wanna say this. When people say that black people had a disadvantage in America, and they, they explore this idea or they exacerbate this idea of white privilege, they're essentially saying black people aren't better or aren't the same as white people. They're saying that black people are less than white people. Because right now, every black person on this campus should understand that there's nothing that a white person can do that you can't do. And if you don't feel that way, you've been tricked. Why don't you come to the mic? You're disrespecting another sister. All you're doing is disrespecting everybody that's coming to the mic. Let me move on. Let me move on. Because you're, you're drawing attention to you. You're in my ear. You're in my ear. What's up, YouTube? Hope you guys are feeling good. Today, guys, we're back on a new video. Today, we're going to be checking out how to recognize the game of the left. This is why Officer Tantrum is a black conservative. I love to check this video out with you guys. Cool. Um, my question is, so you know how in Thomas Sowell, he wrote this book called Dis Discriminations and Disparities. Yeah, I actually and that. he talks about um, personal motivations and how some people have grown up, raised in whatever victimhood they have experienced, whether that's been single motherhood or yeah, yeah. fatherlessness, um, homelessness, whatever, and they're grown basically up in that environment and then they don't have the personal motivations or they don't think or see themselves as being lawyers or doctors yeah, or right, right. president or anything like that. They just see NBA players, rappers, right. things like that. And um, we see that the left has put so much money and time and effort into reparations and critical race theory and stuff like that how are they able to manipulate the situation when the outcomes are very much outweighing and having negative consequences how are they so able to freely manipulate that situation yeah, that's a good question what 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 they're doing is they're weaponizing our struggle to sell us a lie instead of saying we know that america have unduly put black people through a certain struggle let us empower you to empower yourself, not sit here and let us hand you something. Makes sense. And that's what they've been doing over the last they, it's several years. They don't fix the schools. They just let you in a university with, with, a, with uh, affirmative action. It's like, no, no, fix the schools so the kids are qualified and they're competitive. You don't go to the end of the line to try to fix something. You go to the root of it. Young black people, like when I was growing up, I never thought about being a doctor. I didn't know a doctor. I knew a whole bunch of dudes playing college football. I knew a whole bunch of dudes rapping. I wanted to be like, Tupac was my favorite rapper. Me and my cousins, when we were young, we used to try to rap, battle rap each other to beat uh, Bone Thugs. Well, y'all probably too young to know Bone Thugs and Harmony and all them. But we used to battle rap to beat Bone Thugs and Harmony. We, we just didn't have the vision. And it's unfortunate that that just gets perpetuated and celebrated time and time again. I understand why it happens because it's easier to be successful playing sports than it is in academics to a certain degree, right? Yeah. You come from a crappy school. I went to Dunbar High School, which I love my school, but it's in the hood, man, and we didn't have, the, we didn't have resources like that. Yeah. Some people did very well academically. I didn't. I went to the university and got a degree for free by playing sports. But what we have to understand and what needs to be preached is that there's life outside of just this glam of athletics and entertainment. True. We need to start finding other people to look up to than just LeBron. Hmm. Like the young lady, and then she, I don't think she was black or nothing, but she, she didn't know who Ben Carson was. But if I asked her who Beyonce was, she'll tell me. And Ben Carson is far greater of an impact in American history than Beyonce could Fox. ever have. She makes music. Ben Carson is one of the most brilliant men to ever live out of any race of anybody. So I, I think that they've been playing us with the emotionalism and weaponizing our pain. Because black people, I remember when I was in college and I took Africana studies, my first class we learned about lynching. I was so mad when I when I, I was so mad at white people when I saw that that I used to walk through campus and I would walk straight and I'd be like, let a white person bump into me. I, I, I had this anger and hatred that I had when I saw how they did these black people. So the question from that point is that do you go with hatred or do you understand what has happened and you want to be better? And you understand that me and you and none of these people have nothing to do with slavery. We have nothing True. to do with it. That stuff was a long time ago. It doesn't, it, to me, slavery doesn't affect us today. Only in understanding how it happened and not repeating it, but it don't affect us today. There's nothing stopping me from being on a university full of white people. What, 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 how, how am I any different than a white person? Let me, let me tell you this, I wanna say this. When people say that black people had a disadvantage in America 
and they they explore this idea or they exacerbate this idea of white privilege they're essentially saying black people aren't better or aren't the same as mm. white people they're saying that black people are less than white people true because right now every black person on this campus should understand that there's nothing that a white person can do that you can't do and if you don't feel Facts. that way you've been tricked Facts. i went to a university of in new jersey look at this woman still talking can you be respectful why don't you come to the mic you disrespect another sister all you're doing is disrespecting everybody that's coming to the mic let me move on let me move on because you're you're drawing attention to you you're in my ear you're in my ear really this is the attention you want i don't think nothing i just want you to stop or come to the mic it's just simple man see this is the difference you can't have a mentality like this this is where this is how people fail in life <laughs> to a certain degree you got to have decorum even if you disagree with somebody you got to have a level of decorum mm. but anyway let me move on to the next question you have a next question? um that's basically it but okay. um yeah with especially i think that people take it because every single ethnicity in america has had a history of coming into the united states you know like yeah. the italians came and they were yeah. discriminated against yeah. irish people came they were discriminated against i think that black people's integration into society was more recent in years as a, like as far as segregation goes i know right. we were slaves and stuff like that but when they were supposed to yeah. be accepted as people it was entirely different as opposed to that but it's just crazy no i think i agree you've made a really good point and i think that everybody should understand this she had made mention that the integration of black people is much different right if you look at the hispanic people that have come into this country the integration is different they come through immigration or they illegally come into this country with every way they do it they didn't have to go through slavery, Jim Crow, and all the other stuff. So that's a valiant point that black people did have a, a challenging position to be integrated into America is much difficult. But I think through the adversity and difficulty, black people have become much better than they would have if it was no adversity. And if you, if you take advantage of it, you will be great. Ah, uh, uh, just nobody has done anything great without it. Thank you. Nobody. Thank nobody. you. Nobody. And I feel like black people that are successful have ha taken adversity and they've maximized. They've taken that, that, that idea of saying, well, you can't come into this restaurant, to saying, you know what, I'm gonna open my own restaurant and I'm gonna change this thing. My dad, my, that's why having a father is important. My dad, I remember he was on a fire department, he started when he was 19. My dad, my dad is almost, let's see what my dad, almost 60. Started when he was 19. He said there was discrimination on the police, on the fire department when he first started. Like some white guys and then black guys, they didn't really get along. What did my dad do? Did he tuck his tail between his legs? Did he go cry and want to get Al Sharpton to get involved? My dad said, you know what? They better watch how they treat me because one day they'll be working for me. Oh, damn. My dad became the chief, Fort Worth, Texas. He was a, he was a battalion chief in Fort Worth, Texas, retired. Chief of Waco, retired. Chief of Keller, Texas. And he's going to retire from there. You don't need to allow, allow adversity to make you crumble mm. like a coward. True. You take adversity and you maximize and you become great because of it. I came from Fort Worth, Texas, Dunbar High School in Stop 6 in the hood. I didn't let that dictate who I would become. I said, you know what, I see people are selling drugs. I'm going to give you an example. We used to have this car wash and you get your car wash for like $5. Them crackheads, I don't know how they got the, how they end up putting coins in there or whatever. They'll wash your car five dollars. One day I went to the car wash, get my car wash, and I saw a brother smoking crack behind that car wash. And it hurt me. I said, why am I giving money to see my brother smoke crack on the back of this thing just to get my car wash? That changed what, how I saw my own community. And I said, I want to make a difference. I'm going to become a police officer because I want to make a difference in policing. I want to go to university and get an education because most people in my family have never been to a university. Mm. I took adversity and I said, let me take this adversity and use it as fuel to make me become the greatest man that I can be. And if everybody does that and are consistent, they will maximize what God mm. has for them. Not everybody going to be rich. Not everybody going to be Elon Musk. That's not your goal. Your goal is to play the cards that God has put in your hand. And that, that goal may be being a good mom. Hmm. That goal may be being a straight A student, graduating cum laude, summa cum laude. Hmm. That may be just being 
a good person to other people and changing people's lives. Damn. Like we, we have to understand that it's not a failure if you if you're not rich and you don't get to this pinnacle of what people lie to you about is the American mm. dream. It's about maximizing who you are and getting to the, the peak of what you can become. Dang, this man does spew bars. I love this man. Like, I love every single statement he made. Like, it's a pure eye-opener. Turn diversity into something great. There is no, no country, no person who does turn out great without passing through diversity. You have to look forward and have a vision of who you yourself want to become. Because the circumstances like this does not mean you should follow the circumstance and go down the drain. You have to be like, I am different. I am this. I am divine. I am who I want to be. Don't allow the circumstance to pull you down. This this man just spew bars right here. Like, I'll be like, wow. He just he spoke my mind. What I've always been trying to tell people every single time. He just spill it out right here and the young lady right here who was listening blew me out <laughs> i was amazed by her focus and her passion to want to learn to to know more i love people who are open-minded who just do not come into a conversation just to create chaos and havoc you 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 brought in a question but you should be open-minded to hear the next person perspective about what you brought to him. Not just to attack. You are not there to attack. You are there to learn, to listen. If his answer resonates with you. And also know more about what you've never heard before. Unlike that other um, black lady that the camera faced at. She was there to attack. That was just her motive. To attack. Not to grab or learn something from what Officer Tantrum is saying. Guys, this entire video was actually beautiful to watch. I actually learned from it. I actually felt more fire in me, like someone was speaking my mind out for the public. Comment down below to this video, give us a thumbs up. I feel like a lot of black people, black community in general, have to see this video because that white privilege mates, uh, black have been oppressed. This video is to clear your mindset about it. Because you have to stand out. Comment down below. Let's talk about this video. We'll see you guys in the next video. Make sure you stay safe.